how have you been enjoying the aftermath of well of this victory? It must have been one of the sweetest ones of your career. Um, one of the sweetest, one of the most important, one of the most pivotal. You know, this this fight here was you know it really had me at a crossroads, and you know, depending on the outcome, it, it, it would it would be a huge impact on my career, more so than any other fight, I think. So, um, yeah, you know, it was it was extremely important for me to go in there and not only win, but be, convin be convinc convincing in, in my victory. Um, and that's exactly what I did. Absolutely. Um, I saw that clip of you being uh, reunited with your, with your nephew. Um, you know, I'm not saying that's a new side of your character, but maybe it's a side that you weren't so willing to show publicly. <laughs> Um, so I was just wondering if perhaps now you maybe you're kind of less guarded with your emotions and and that kind of thing, how you present yourself to the, to the outside world. Um, you know, with, with this, you know, with everything that's happened over the last few years, you know, it, you know, it's become a huge part of my life. Um, you know, I, I couldn't. I couldn't hide away from it if I wanted to, I, you know, and I, and I think it's good for people to see um, the real me, if you want to, if you want to call it that. Um, not that I'm not real when I'm in the public or in the ring, because I absolutely am. But you know, there are there are sides to uh, to me, to to everybody, you know, and, and you may not think somebody is a certain way behind closed doors or when they're not in, you know, in, in, in a fight situation, um, you know, you know, fighters are, are, a lot of the time are not seen as human beings and we act, we, we really are, you know, we have, we have, we go through the same things everybody else goes through. We deal with the same issues in life. Um, you know, we have families, we have, you know we have uh, you know we have ups and downs in 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 in, in life and 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 um, you know this is a huge part of of my life now is is uh, you know bringing up my father's son I mean uh, my brother's son um, you know giving him that that male figure in his life that obviously he doesn't have uh, making sure that that's there for him you know. I think it's important for a father figure to be in any boy's life, especially, um, you know, a boy with Eubank blood running through his veins. You know, they have, we need, we need that male figure there to instruct and guide. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's important and uh, it's, uh, I'm very happy. Excellent. Yeah. Cause see, I was thinking, well, it's, you know, tough guys have feelings too. And that's a nice thing to demonstrate. And also I was really interested in what you just said then, because, you know, another boxer said to me that people look at you like you're this, this superhero, but you know, you're a human being as well. So, you know, in your career, especially in your life, you've had, had a lot to contend with. And it's not easy when you also go out under the lights to, to have a huge fight, a huge rematch with Liam Smith. That takes a, a lot of mental strength, doesn't it? For sure. For sure, you know there was, uh, yeah, there were there were demons I was battling through, you know, throughout the last six seven months. Um, you know, he, he, that's what happens when you're coming off of a defeat, especially a, you know, a defeat where you you know you're stopped. Um, you know, you you have to deal with a lot of things mentally and, and a lot of, uh, you know, questions are asked. You know, does he still have it? Does he still want to fight? Can he still perform at the highest levels? Um, you know, all these things were being asked of me. And I knew I could, but obviously when so many people don't think you can, don't think that you have it anymore. You know, there were points where you kind of second guess. You know, well, you know maybe, maybe, maybe some of these people are right. Maybe I, maybe I'm, uh, maybe I am getting a bit old. Maybe I, uh, you know, and you, you start, you have to catch yourself. You can't let yourself slip down that, that slope of doubt and, and worry and fear. You have to be strong. You have to be sure. You have to be steadfast. 
in your beliefs. Um, you have to keep you have to keep it together, no matter how hard people are trying to push you and how hard people are trying to convince you and others that you know you're going to lose and that you don't deserve to be where you are and that you're a fake. All the things I was seeing online for for half a year, I had to. Um, you know, I, I, I had to fight those demons, and that's and that's what I did. And I proved that all those all those haters, all those naysayers, all those doubters were wrong. Um, and I guess that's what makes this this victory um, so satisfying. Because yeah, this was I was the underdog. I was the guy that just wasn't supposed to win. It was it was at the end of his career and was just going to get knocked out again. That was me, and um, yeah, to come out of that situation, you know, to to, to get booed into a, an arena of twenty one thousand people and then cheered out, that's a that's a hard thing to do. That is a hard thing to do, but we did it. Yeah, absolutely. And go like going into the fight beforehand, how aware were you of? Kind of, it was a gamble. Take it, you know, a big gamble for where your career would be if you if you had lost again. Huge gamble, a, a gamble that I did not need to take. I didn't need to risk, you know, possibly losing out on these big fights against these big names that are all lined up for me. And that's what would have happened if I had lost again. I didn't need to risk that. You know, I could have just taken the loss and moved on like a lot of fighters do. They don't want to get back in there with the guy that beat them. Um, especially not, you know, in the same arena with the same 21,000 people booing you and throwing stuff at you and, you know, wanting you to get knocked out. That wasn't, it wasn't fun. It wasn't enjoyable. It wasn't, um, it wasn't something that I had to do. You know, I could have taken bigger money fights Um in much more comfortable environments. I chose not to. I chose to take the hard route. I chose to test myself. Uh, I chose to prove myself. Um, you know, we don't run. We don't run from these challenges. We don't, we don't hide from anybody. We don't back down. We man up. Yeah, yeah well, you, said, you mentioned how hostile that arena was you know it was people people did throw stuff at you I t someone threw a beer at you i took the hit it landed on me so I, i'd like to say i put myself bodily in the way but i think it was more an accident but yeah that just shows kind of what you were facing like you know internally with your own uh having to confront your own demons and plus the very real sort of hostility in the arena going in it's a uh, it's a frightening thing it's a big thing to over uh, overcome it's impossible it's insurmountable it's unimaginable to have to go through that very few fighters have to deal with that type of pressure that type of hostility um you just most guys just don't have to go through it i've i've been having to go through that my entire career um and that's shaped and molded me into what i am now which is a hard tough veteran in the sport that doesn't um that doesn't buckle under the pressure that doesn't crumble when things get rough that doesn't look for a way out when i get hurt you know i'm a fighter that's what i do i fight i fight through it absolutely and and you bet big on yourself and that means you've won big so now you must feel like you've got a sort of whole array of options you can really choose what you want next and when you want it and, and it'll all be on your terms like what kind of position are you in now thanks to thanks to winning that fight under those circumstances yeah well that what that was part of the gamble you know <laughs> that's, the, that's the family cat um <laughs> that was the gamble you know yeah, I could not take the fight. Yeah, I could, you know, get a bigger payday somewhere else, um, and, and and you know, and, and be more in a, in a more comfortable environment with a crowd that's not gonna not gonna hate me. Um, but it doesn't 
it doesn't put me in a great position. You know, these fighters then can then maybe say that they're the A side, that you know I'm coming off of a loss, so you know I have to I have to dance to the to their tune and and and, and meet their demands. Um, I didn't want to go into these fights in that position. I wanted to I wanted to have I wanted to be in control. I wanted to have the power position. Um, and the only way I, I could do that was by avenging the loss and, and, and making sure that there was no doubt that I am, a, I, I am the better fighter in, in, uh, in this, in this matchup. Um, so, and, and the risk has paid off for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I imagine you've been inundated with, with offers and opportunities coming in. You know, are you thinking more just to sit back and really weigh up all your options before deciding, you know, what, what you might want next? Yeah, there's no rush. Listen, you, you know, it's still fresh. It was only, uh, what was it, six days ago. Yeah, only six days ago. I, I was in the ring. So, um, yeah, I've had offers. I've had suggestions. You know, I've had opponents put to me. Um, but again, there is no real rush for me. Um, you know, we will take our time and we will plan the best route for me. Um, there's so many big names and so many big fights. Um, you know, you have to be smart. You know, you have to be smart in terms of, uh, in terms of business and in terms of, you know, what the public want to see also. Um, and in terms of placing yourself in the best position to, you know, to keep moving up, you know, to be able to stay in the in the hot seat and and eventually get these uh, these titles, you know, and they are hard to pin down. You know, I I do I do want to fight for a world title, one hundred percent. But you know, the politics that comes with all that, it's not easy to navigate sometimes. I'm in a, I I'm just blessed to be in a position to where. I don't have to be in huge fights um, or I don't have to be in world title fights to be a part of huge fights. Most guys, they need the belts to be in big fights. Um, that's what makes them box office or makes them, you know, worth tuning in for. Okay, he's fighting for a world title. Okay, he's a world champion. I, I don't need a belt to, I guess, um, Uh, to captivate an audience. You know, I do that with how I fight. I do that with how I speak. I do that with who I am as a man and as a fighter. Um, now, if we can get both in at the same time, that's the dream. You know, a big name and a world title together. It's, it's very hard to pull off, but I'm going to try everything I can to do that. Um, again, we just have to, you know, take our time and, and plan the best route. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, you are in a position where, you know, the world champions will come to you. I spoke to Bob Arum yesterday who represents Alan Ken Louie. He's got the WBO belt and he's fighting the IBF tight list uh, in mid October, you know, so I asked Bob about whether he'd like, you know, if Alan Ken Louie wins that, whether he'd like to fight the, to make the fight with you. And of course, Bob Arum would love that. Um, so you've got, you know, you could fight for a unified belt, you know, down the line. Of, I don't know what's happening with the WBC's ratings, but I can bet that you'll be high up in their ratings when they next come out. So again, there's that WBC title that has been a bit uh, dormant for a while. Have you thought about those sort of particular world champions and also when you might when you might like to sort of claim your shot at them? You know, it's, it's all about timing. It's all about timing and it's all about... Um, business, you know, um, you know, the, the, the names you just mentioned, I genuinely haven't seen these guys fight before. I don't know who they are and I'm in the game. So the general public are not going to know who these guys are, um, which means it's hard for them to tune in if you're, um, if you're making it a pay-per-view event, which which a world title should be, um, so you got to be smart. You know, you got to 
you've got to build a fight in the right way and, you, and you've got to have it in the right place and at the right time. That is up to the promoters. You know, that's their job to, to fit all that together. It's my job to fight, you know? Yeah, yeah. And a name that's obviously already, it was a thrown at you almost immediately after the fight was Conor Ben. Um, but I suppose, like you said earlier, you're in a position where you can call the shots. So if that fight is to happen, I take it it would be on your terms, whether that's in terms of the weight or the drug testing regime or indeed when it might happen. Absolutely. You know, he, he lost all his privileges when he failed those drug tests uh, a year ago. Um I'm the A-side, uh, I'm the shot caller in that fight. Um, it will happen, the fight will happen. I can't tell you when it will happen. Um, you know, he still has a lot of issues to, to smooth out. And um, I have a lot of options to weigh up, you know. That fight doesn't need to be rushed in any way, um, in my opinion. You know, Conor Ben isn't going anywhere. Um, the timing has to be right, uh, and he does need to, you know, be fully acquitted of um, of the situation he's in. You know, he needs he he can't have any appeals going on with the board. He can't have any, you know, drug agencies, um, you know, having him on a banned list or what you know whatever the case may be. He has to be one hundred percent clear for that fight to go ahead. As far as I'm concerned at this moment in time, he isn't. Um, so, uh, you know, that's why I can't say when that fight will happen, but it will happen. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, because, and also, he's kind of, for him to have a huge fight, he doesn't really have anywhere else to go, whereas you have a lot of places to go in, in the near future as well. You know, you could get, you could get a quick pay-per-view in with Kel Brook if you wanted to, you know, before the end of the year and leave that till next year. Like I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the power position now. Everybody wants a piece now, you know, and last week it was like, Oh, you banged on his way out. He's done. He's finished. He's about to get banged up by Smith again. And then we're never going to hear from him. And now I'm the number one guy. You know, it's it's insane how fickle this sport is. Um, but you know, the the truest the truest quote of, of them all when it comes to boxing is you're as only good as your as your last fight. You're only as good as your last fight. You know, when I had just lost, that's 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 what I was as good at as a loser, a guy who's, you know, full of shit that, you know, talked a bunch and but couldn't back it up. Now I've backed it up. Now I've kind of, and I told Liam before the fight, he said, you, this is all going to be a dream. Everything, you know, you, in, in, you've enjoyed your 15 minutes of fame, but this is all going to be a dream by the end of, um, the end of Saturday night. And now it is. Now no one remembers what happened in that first fight. All they remember is what happened uh, on, on, you know, last Saturday when I dominated him for 10 rounds in a row. Um, so yeah, now, now that's that is how it feels. It just feels like it was a bad dream, you know. The last few months, the last six months, that 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 first fight just feels like it was a bad dream. But it doesn't it doesn't feel like it happened or it matters anymore, um, which is great because it, you know it was a dark time for me. Mm. Um, so it's great to be out of that now. Yeah, yeah, and that you know that level of performance. You know that would merit you a, a fight with a Canelo Alvarez like that. You know, a super fight like that. If Jamal Charlo can jump up from super welterweight, you know, you're the, you're kind of one of the top middleweights, and you know, you versus Canelo makes sense. Absolutely. You know, Canelo Canelo goes where the money is, and um, I don't, I can't think of any bigger money fights than than me versus Canelo. Uh, I know he wants to fight in the UK. It's a huge market. There's not many other guys there that that people would like to see fight more than me uh, and 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 Alvarez. Um, but you know, he's one of them guys. He really does. Um, you know, the, the the he does make the rules. You know, he he does what he wants. He moves up in weights. He comes down in weights. He holds belts in different weight divisions and. He does all these things that other fighters could just never do. Um, 
So, you know, it's hard to kind of target him. Yeah. You can't target Canelo Alvarez. He just, whenever he wants to come and fight, he'll fight. You look at the options. Okay, yeah, I, you know, that's going to be a good money fight. Yeah, I think I can beat him. And he just does what he wants. So I'm not really too, um, I'm not so much targeting him. You know, if it comes, it comes great. But I, I can't, you can't chase him. He does what yeah. he wants. Yeah, it would just be nice to see one of the, you know, he's beaten a lot of British guys. It would be nice to see a British fighter actually get one, get one back and beat him. For sure. You know, they call him the Brit Slayer, you know. And people know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go down without fight. You know I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get in get, get in there and freeze up. You know I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna take it to him. And that's what people want to see. And that's the fights he needs to be in. Whether he whether he'll accept a fight like that is is to be seen. Um, but yeah, you know, tell the fans, get the fans to, to to speak up. You know, get the polls out there. Get these guys, you know, demanding that he fights guys that know how to bring it to him, like me.